Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. Today, we're going to talk about overcoming your past. Overcoming your past can be incredibly difficult. I had the opportunity to speak for the Ochi's First Nation. You can uh, see their logo here in the nice shirt that they provided me. As a, as a motivational speaker, I, I get the chance to go to different companies, organizations, First Nations, which is the Canadian equivalent of a Native Indian or American tribe, and, and talk to people and share my experiences and show them that there is a possibility to overcome the most incredibly difficult and seemingly overwhelming circumstances. Now, am I, am I going to say it's easy? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, some of the things I learned about from the people just uh, in the Ochis Nation sharing their challenges and the terrible things that happened to them, oh my gosh. I mean, it, it just blew me away. I knew people in the Native American Indian or First Nation uh, world have faced lots of difficulties in the past, but I just couldn't believe how tough life has been for them right now in, in these days with their children growing up. I, I, if, you, if you had the chance, watch the movie Wind River. Boy, it, it really reflects uh, the reality of living on a reservation and living in that world. now. It is the cute blonde successfully defending herself again? Yeah, that's all Hollywood, but the, the, the fundamental point is that the people in just brutal circumstances being abused as a three year old, I mean, oh, oh my gosh, it just spins me up thinking about it. Where I learned that uh, the, this, this one man, he was just telling his story about, oh, the, the first time I had my first drunk. And then he goes on to tell it, and I didn't know what that meant. And so I finally asked uh, one of the, the tribal members, like, I'm sorry, what does first drunk mean? I'm like a total noob. I don't know anything about this. And he laughed, like, oh, geez. The first drunk means the first time you got drunk, however that might be. And apparently this is like a phrase in the in the First Nation, like like the Uchis here, which they, they have a really cool logo. Let me, let me show you that there. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to stand up. Yeah, T totally cool. Uh, <clears throat> but th this one guy said, you know, my, my first drunk was when I was a kid. I was three years old. Oops, let me shut the heater off. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I was three years old and I had my first drunk. And, and that's why I didn't register. I'm like, what do you mean three years old? I, it's just... <clears throat> I didn't even understand. So this guy had to explain it to me like a kid because I, I don't live in that world and I, I didn't have a clue what it meant. He said, my dad, his brothers and his friends got together and they handed me a bunch of liquor and kind of made me drink a bunch of liquor, whiskey or whatever it was till I was stumbling drunk, passing out and throwing up. Did that just register? Imagine giving liquor to a three-year-old not doing the gum rub so they kind of calm down go to sleep or they're they have tooth pain but giving them drinks and saucing it up or whatever so the kid could get drunk stumbling around and puke on himself oh my gosh imagine growing up in that world now it's not like people in the neighborhood or kids or whatever your dad or your mom it doesn't really matter uh, it, it, apparently it's happened in both and having the person who is supposed to protect you from dangers and evils and harms getting you drunk when you're three years old think about that Th that just blew me away and and then your protective world is shattered like the person who's supposed to take care of me the, the one who brought me into this world now hurt me and made me feel ill. I mean, we all, as kids and as adults, we, we get sick, we have things happen. But imagine somebody intentionally making you ill, sick, nauseous, throwing up, drunk. I mean, not, not like a little buzz, but I mean, 
stumbling, falling on your face drunk. And you know what happened with the dad? Nothing. And you know what the dad and his brothers and friends did? They all did it because they needed a laugh. Yeah. These men got their son drunk because they wanted a laugh. So, hey, wouldn't it be funny if... I won't we'll use his real name, but uh, uh, Johnny has some drinks and he stumbles around. Ha ha ha! Holy bleeping bleep. Now, that is the world. Not, not everybody had that, but th that phrase, your first drunk, is everybody I talked to, men, women, it didn't matter. They all had that experience. So, okay, that, I mean, a horrible experience. That, that, that's how you start growing up. But now you ask, let me wrap the whole story here. Why was I there? Why do I have the jack and why did they give it to me? Well, I was invited as a speaker to a First Nation group and I I'd speak for uh, First Nations or Native American Indian tribes or corporations or groups. It doesn't really matter. But I was actually invited there to speak about my difficulties in overcoming extreme circumstances where one mistake could literally result in death. Nobody was out in Antarctica or on the mountains or in high mountains getting me drunk. I mean, I, I kind of felt like I wanted to be a little buzzed, but you know, not, not drunk, of course not. I, I, I thought dehydrated rum might be good to take away the pain, but you know, that leads into other problems. But I, I showed them that this skinny dude, now yeah, see, I'm not all big and burly, six foot four, six foot four, <laughs> blonde with legs as thick as my torso. <laughs> no. They literally hired me because they didn't believe this skinny engineering Asian looking guy could drag a refrigerator halfway across the continent and survive in extreme cold. Now the, the Ochis nations from pretty far up in Canada, as far as you can do, go and still be livable, so they know what cold is, but they're like, we, we just couldn't believe you could do that and be out there and in your tent and survive and drag 330 pounds. I mean, just nuts. So I said, yeah, we honestly hired Lee because we just had to see it for ourselves. Now, don't get me wrong. I love being hired as a motivational speaker because I like sharing my experiences of all these crazy things and then tying it into yours and showing you how you can overcome your difficulties. But to illustrate that, it was just something very special to show me that man these people had terrible problems a uh, divorce rape drunk killed i mean they had that when i spoke to them it was uh it was i think it was october november they had already had in their community of uh, it's about two thousand people they had already had 13 suicides that year now and people sadly commit suicide frequently all the time in the US but not what well, one out of let's see 13 out of 2000 that that's pushing like 1% of the people in your world die and not because they got cancer not because they got old or got hit by a car fell off their bike no suicide ah. and I heard that what I said, yeah, we want to hear your story to give it a vision where you can go to the most horrifically terrible weather place on earth and still get out of it and succeed and create a vision for something greater. And so uh, th that's what I was told is like, man, we, we want you here because we want to get an inspirational message that shows us that no matter how bad conditions are, I have this film that shows the extreme storm outside my tent. If I would have stepped out six feet, I would have been dead, blown away and gone. And then they, they said, look, we've had some terrible circumstances. Our lives have been really challenging, but they spent the money to bring you as a speaker to invest in your message to inspire our people. But they, they spent a lot of money to bring a ton of their tribe down to this casino and uh, native reservation in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho and brought me down to share my message. And they said, look, it's worth us to invest in your message, to invest in our people, to give them something to talk about and inspire them that, yeah, there's hope, there's extreme circumstances, that the, the world is, of course, brutal and terrible things happen, but, I mean, just stuff out of your control. 
And, and so the, the idea is that you can come from terrible circumstances, your, your parents getting you drunk at three years old, but you can still do something to inspire yourself, to give yourself a vision that you can actually escape the toughest circumstances of all. Now, is it easy? No, it's extremely hard. Just look at people in Southern Sudan, in Syria, in Myanmar, in just brutal places of terrible oppressions. Caravan of people coming up from Guatemala and Honduras. I've been to Guatemala and Honduras. I can see why they want to get out of there. It's not political persecution. It's just a scary place. I mean, they, they have armed guards at restaurants because people come in and rob and kill all the time. Uh, fortunately, that doesn't happen in like the Ochis First Nation area, but they have some tough, tough things. So uh, my, my message to you is that even if you've never experienced your dad or mom getting you drunk at three years old simply because they have a laugh, and I hope not. If they have, please get some counseling. But chances are you haven't had this experience. And it's not to say that your troubled experience is less than this, but it's to say that everybody has had these terrible experiences, but it is possible to raise yourself up and develop a vision of yourself where you can go beyond what's happened to you and become something greater. Uh, somebody I know, she was bullied in 6th, 7th, 8th grade, ninth. I mean, she dropped out of school. She had a terrible time. She's still struggling with that as a 20-year-old because she hasn't developed that vision yet for how to go beyond and escape what's in her head. Because her circumstances are great. She's got a safe home. Plenty of food, car, I mean, life's easy. But in her mind and in her heart, she still hasn't gotten past that. So that's my message to you. Think about what's in your mind or your heart. Most of the time, unless you're living on the street or in a war zone or somewhere, chances are your physical safety is probably okay, but it's your mental and emotional state that really matters to get you out of the vision of where you are and take you to somewhere where you can become. And, and that's why if you want to bring me on as a motivational speaker to inspire your people, to show them that it's possible to eat butter and, and just do some really difficult stuff to achieve incredible success, I totally can do that for you. But even just as people watching this video here, I'm here to tell you it is totally possible to rise up beyond your difficult background and become the person you want to become. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I am a polar explorer and motivational speaker. Please like and comment on my video. Subscribe to the channel below. Please support me on Patreon, Venmo, uh, PayPal, and whatever other message. And just leave me a comment and let me know what I'm doing. Thank you very much and be inspired with your life.